My name is Jeffrey Cam, and I'm the host of Digital Oil & Gas, the podcast that looks at the impact of digital technology on the oil and gas industry. If you want to discuss this week's topic further, or just stay in touch, you can always reach me at Jeffrey Cam on Twitter or at JeffreyCam.com. This podcast is entitled, How to Review a Digital Strategy. Recently, a midstream company asked me to carry out an independent review of their digital strategy and to suggest possible improvements. So, here's how I approached it. The company had been into digital innovation for over a year, and they wanted to get an outside-in look at their digital strategy to see how they were traveling. They had acknowledged the wave of digital change happening all around, assembled a small team of professionals to take charge, and developed a set of plans to achieve their vision. It's always tricky to carry out a review of someone else's work, To me, it's like being invited to someone's home for dinner and you tell them how dusty the furniture is. Dinner never ends well. And in particular, it feels unfair to the individuals who built the strategy in the first instance to then apply a different set of measures to appraise its worth. So how do you size up the quality of a digital strategy? Well, digital is still pretty novel to most of heavy industry and still very new in oil and gas. There are no purpose-built frameworks for carrying out this sort of work. Deadlines and budget constraints also impose their own pressures to execute reviews efficiently. My approach was to agree with a company's set of objective measures in advance of doing anything. Objectivity helps remove the sting of feedback and sharpens the work to collect the evidence, avoiding that advisor risk of trying to boil the ocean. The measures were framed around four questions or themes. Number one, how is the digital strategy actually put together? Number two, what's included in the digital strategy? Number three, is the strategy being actively implemented? And number four, is the digital strategy fit for purpose? Let's begin with process. I assume that if you want a good strategy, you need to start with a good strategy development process. A poor development process could lead to a disappointing outcome. As a new industrial field, digital innovation doesn't yet have a widely accepted and industry standard process for developing pure digital strategy. In that light, I think it's probably sensible to start with an existing strategy process and modify it to incorporate digital thinking. My objective measures around process, in the absence of a vigorous and proven method, were aimed at things like scope, timing, participants, and data gathering methods. Here's the methods and measures that I actually applied. First, the full organization participates in some fashion. Digital opportunity is appearing everywhere. Second, the team that develops the strategy were qualified to do so. You don't ask plumbers to do brain surgery. Third, any structural biases that could influence the strategy are mitigated. If the team reports to finance, for instance, the strategy may have too much of a cost focus. Fourth, the timing of the development effort occurs when the organization has capacity and attention. Summertime is a bad time, as is year-end. Fifth, the participants in the strategy effort are conversant on digital, not the development team, but the business users. If the business does not know blockchain from augmented reality, they'll struggle to provide meaningful input into the process. And finally, the way the data is gathered is free from bias. Totally open interviews are fun to do, but important things can be overlooked. So to get the data for these measures, I interviewed the development team, looked over the interview guides that were used, matched the interviews to the org chart, and traced some of the interviews through the analysis to see that the data worked its way into the plan. The next focus area of my approach was on the content of the plan itself. Executives trusted that the strategy process yielded a thoughtful and competent plan, but how could they be sure? For example, the process to develop the plan might have included the impacts of digital on field operations, but the final plan might have, through some bias, ignored this data and concentrated on those areas of interest just solely to the planners. So, the measures I put in place for assessing the content included the following. First, the full span of the business and the impacts of digital would be reflected in the plan. This ensures that the bias of the developers and the participants are kept in check. Next, the initiatives and the investments are aiming at some broad digital vision. Otherwise, just about any digital investment will make sense since digital is impacting all of society. Next, the digital changes balance short-term cash-focused opportunities with long-term positioning. Early momentum with some quick wins proves out the faith in digital investments and provides cash for reinvestment. Fourth, the benefits from digital are programmed for both commercial and operational areas. Oil and gas companies in particular struggle to introduce technology change into the field, but operations should be fully baked into the plan. Next, the future of work and the impacts of digital on the workforce are considered. 
Digital has the potential to alter most, if not all, jobs to one degree or another, leading to a very different future for the workforce and very different skills. The digital strategy should incorporate actions to help the workforce cope with change. Next, the risks of having increasing exposure to digital innovation are mitigated. Cyber is a board-level concern now, hacking and viruses are pervasive, and many digital innovations still treat cyber as an afterthought. And finally, the plan is readable, communicates its message, and has high utility. A great plan that is poorly expressed will struggle with adoption. To size up the content, I walked through the plan several times to understand its intent and focus, looked for its North Star or ultimate destination state, and checked its connection to the business strategy. And in particular, I was attentive to the impacts of digital on the IT organization. For many companies attempt to spin up fast-paced digital initiatives using agile methods, only to discover that IT is forced to deploy using traditional waterfall techniques. The next dimension in the review was on the execution of the plan. There's little in point in investing a lot of energy in developing a digital roadmap or transformation program, gaining organizational support and hiring staff, only to find out that the plan is not even being followed. The measures here were on things like organization, structure, and results. First, the organization of the resources to enable digital delivery are in place and in an effective structure. Many companies establish digital delivery as a distinct organization, which can create barriers to implementation. Keeping commercial IT and operational technology in separate silos also inhibits breakthrough solutions. Second, the governance over the digital strategy includes senior leadership involvement strong business ownership, and frequent check-ins to assess progress. Digital is changing very quickly, and investments in digital need to be revisited regularly to make sure they continue to be calibrated to the target. Third, the methods used to deliver on the digital strategy reflect agile approaches. Unlike traditional waterfall methods that delay benefits from technology investments until a full-scope rollout, digital benefits accrue in a series of small stages. IT professionals need training and coaching on agile as part of the digital strategy. And finally, the execution of the deliverables is purposeful. There should be clear and meaningful results that are achieved quickly if digital is being done right. At this stage of the review, I spoke with the leaders of the digital program delivery, who would have best view about how the company was tracking on delivery. A simple measure I used was to categorize actual projects into two buckets, digital and not digital, to see which bucket was more full. I was particularly interested in how foundational capabilities were being put into place, specifically cloud computing. Without cloud adoption, most other digital investments will be delayed. The final dimension of the review was to assess if the digital plan would indeed help the company both future-proof itself from unexpected disruption and position the company to be disruptive in its sector. A high-quality digital strategy pushes the boundaries of modern business solutions. The underlying logic is that if an incumbent is not looking to disrupt, some startup is. Here are the measures I use to gauge fit for purpose. First, an active market surveillance and scanning function is surfacing a steady stream of innovations that have disruptive potential. The scanning function does not merely watch what the peer group is doing. That didn't work for retailers, the media sector, hotels, taxis, tourism, entertainment, you name it. It looks to adjacent sectors and similar industries. Next, the pools of funds for experimentation permit managers to run proofs of concept and trials of different digital solutions to see which ones work. These experiments aim to improve the existing business as well as disrupt the status quo for the market. Both purposes receive attention. Third, specific attention is being paid to business model change. Digital innovation can unlock quite dramatic inside-the-fence process improvements, but business model changes are the most disruptive and of which boards are most concerned. And finally, the digital strategy includes engagement with the collective of companies working in digital, in addition to the incumbent suppliers. Digital innovation relies on an ecosystem of educators, financiers, startups, research houses, incubators, accelerators, rainforests, and other social mechanisms that increase the potential for digital success. To complete the review, I reviewed the specific digital portfolio and spoke with the digital leadership about their attempts to disrupt their own business and to promote the ecosystem to suggest ways to disrupt their operations. Having an outside-in review of your digital strategy is a bit tricky, but a worthwhile exercise to give some confidence that you're on the right track. 
If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe to the show. You can find more episodes of Digital Oil & Gas on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or just visit jeffreycan.com slash podcast for more. If you have a minute, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts and tell other people about the show. This helps them discover more great content. Later this year, Jeffrey will publish a book on the impacts of digital innovation on the oil and gas industry. You can keep track of this new project by following Jeffrey on LinkedIn. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digital Oil and Gas. The podcast returns next Wednesday, so tune in then.